2.6 should be a very quick lesson. We covered this in Integrated 2 and Algebra 2. Translations and reflections of graphs. So if I start out with the graph f of x, and then I do things to that graph, um, it's really easy to see what happens to those. So I'm just going to make a table, and then we're going to do some examples. This is when you need to know your parent functions, your linear function, your x squared function, your square root function, your x cubed function. I'll write their names, our cube root of x function. So this is our x. This is equals x equals x squared, square root of x, x cubed, the cube root of x. Um, we're going to be doing things to those. Oh, we need one more. The absolute value of x. Those are on the front of my wall. If I do f of x, um, we're going to say g of x is equal to f of x plus h. We're going to put a minus h in there. This is a horizontal shift. H units. And it's in the opposite direction of there. For example, if I had, um, we're going to say g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. This is my absolute value graph. Shifted to the right. That's what that means. That negative means the opposite. Okay. Um, so I can shift my graph left and right. So that's the horizontal shift. I can do g of x equals my original function plus some k. This is a vertical shift. A units. For example, I can do, that's the first one, g of x is equal to um, x squared plus 5. So my x squared graph is this blue one. My new graph would be this graph just moved up 5. This is uh, x squared shifted up. I can combine those two, do two shifts. Other thing I can get is I can do g of x is equal to the opposite of f of x. This one right here is a reflection across the x-axis. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to flip your graph upside down. And here, I have g of x is equal to f of negative x. And this is a reflect across the y-axis. So you need to know if it's inside the function, outside the function. Um, so inside the function is horizontal stuff. Outside the function is vertical stuff. And then basically be able to um, sketch graphs based off of these transformations. Okay. So an example, your homework problem number one, I'm going to do one like it. So like. Work one. They want you to graph x squared accurately, and then they want you to graph the following functions. I'm going to do some that are slightly different. They want you to graph these. A, I'm going to do f of x equals x minus 1 squared. B, I'm going to do y equals x squared minus 2. C, I'm going to do g of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 1. 
and D, I'm going to do H of X equals negative X minus three squared minus two. So first thing we want to do is we want to graph the original function accurately. To do that, I'm actually going to graph a piece of graph paper. And then I'm going to do it on the graph paper and I'm going to go back and forth between my functions. See if I can get them. That gets it mostly on there. So um, I'm going to start here. There's my origin. I'm not going to draw the vertical lines. But for x and then x squared, I'm going to go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and 3, just so that we have some values there. 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. That's where I'm getting the values for that I'm making the dots with. So 1, 4, 9. The next one would be 16. 1, 4, 9. Next one would be 16. I guess I can put a dot there. I'm going to dot this one in here. Roughly. Make it a curve. Please do not give me sharp V's at the bottom of your quadratics. You'll hear the exact same thing when we go to do trig graphs second semester. So that's X squared. The next one I want to do is X minus one squared. This is this graph shifted to the right one. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go over one, just moving every dot one to the right. Okay. Next one is x squared minus 2. That says take my original graph and move everything 2 down. So I'm going to go down 2. So from here, I'm going to go down to, go down to, go down to, um, down to from here, here, go down to, go down to, go down to. And the last one I'm going to graph is the negative x. Uh, let me get a different color pen. A little darker here. Negative of x minus 3 squared minus 2. Now I'm actually going to show you how I would do this. First thing I do is I'm going to find the vertex. 3 to the right, 2 down. 1, 2, 3, down 2. There's my vertex. Then here, that negative in front of that x squared means I'm going to go over in both directions 1, and I'm going to go down 1, because that's what the negative 1 represents. We actually go down a, which is whatever number's in front. Then I'm going to go over 2, down um, 4. We actually go down 4a. So let's let me get my points there. Over 1, down 1. Over 2, down a total of 4. Down 1, down 4. Over 3, down a total of 9. So 7, 8, 9. 7, 8, 9. That would be the graph of that function. So that's the kind of work they're having you do. The biggest thing, they're not going to necessarily have you do them with... Um, X, just x squared. They're going to have you do them with any one of these functions, x, x squared, square to x, x cubed. Um, one I don't have written on there that I see that's possible ability for your homework is 1 over x. Um, so let's talk about what 1 over x does. 
1 over x is our hyperbola. Looks like this. Okay, those are vertical asymptotes and a horizontal asymptote. We have the point 1, 1 on the graph. And we have the point negative 1, negative 1 on the graph. So an example of one here would be if I had y equals, um, let's go, negative 1 over x plus 3 plus 4. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to go 3 to the left, 4 up. So we're going to write up 4. Okay. What that means is my asymptotes, my vertical and horizontal asymptotes are shifting. I'm going three to the left. I'm gonna go up four. But this negative means my graph flips upside down. So this part that was down below my asymptote is now going to be above my asymptote. This part that was above my asymptote is now going to be below my asymptote. That's what I would do to come up with a quick sketch of that. My recommendation is if you are not familiar or haven't, you know, not comfortable with it, once you come up with your graph, please check them with Desmos. Um, that should help you out for all of that. And that finishes our chapter two.